man i appreciate y'all for tapping in with these videos no cap you know what i'm saying but first and foremost i gotta say thank y'all and also continue uh leaving recommendations and ideas and all that good stuff in the comments but one thing i'm gonna need y'all to do right now get your lighters ready because we about to see who getting smoked today so for today's episode we're gonna do something completely different you know what i'm saying i'm trying to switch it up we're gonna we're gonna tap in we're gonna slide to uh usdb the united states disciplinary barracks you know what i mean colloquially known as leavenworth it's a military correctional jail so pretty much if you was in like iraq during the war or whatever and you was just going around shooting random people just doing weird stuff this is where you will go so with that being said i'm gonna give y'all a little bit of history on leavenworth y'all ready Turn your volume up. The engines are about to stop, player. It's one of three uh, prisons built on Fort Leavenworth property. The others being the Federal Civilian United States Penitentiary, Leavenworth, which is a few miles away. And the other one is the Midwest Joint Regional Correctional Facility, which is like a level one, level two, right? Right. So it re um, <clears throat> in reports, it reports the United States Army Correctional Corrections Command it, and its commanding officer usually holds the rank of a colonel. Yeah, that part. The uh, so in the uh, the USDB is the U.S. military's only maximum security facility that houses male service members convicted at court martial for violation of the you know military code. So pretty much, this is like a super max, but for military people. You know what I'm saying? So, but um, yeah, only enlisted prisoners with sentence over ten years, commissioned officers and pr and prisoners convicted of offenses related to national security are confined to the USDB. Enlisted prisoners with sentences under ten years are confined in smaller facilities, such as the Midwest Joint Regional Correctional Facility or the Naval Consolidated Brig at Chesapeake, Virginia. Corrections personnel at the facility are Army Correction Specialists. There's MOS 31E. My baby mama was a military police, but her ass went AWOL. <laughs> That's another story I'll tell another day if y'all remember to bring it up. But anyway, they trained at the U.S. Military Police School located at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, as well as Marine Air Force. But yeah, so nah, she went AWOL real quick. She went AWOL, and she was driving my car one day. She gets arrested. She does like 45 days in county jail. Then they send her ass to Fort Leonard Wood and she had to do this paperwork shit and all that but she she's good now um yeah so uh are y'all ready to get into some of these inmates get into some of these uh people that is housed here because I'm ready first off we have okay this is one of them names I'm gonna have issues with Hassan Akbar and I got that one right Hassan Akbar, he killed two officers and wounded 14 others while deployed to Camp Pennsylvania and Kuwait on the eve of two, the, the 2003 invasion of Iraq. So pretty much this dude was on some friendly fire shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and dude is on death row. They are going to smoke his ass. Next up, we have Nidal Hassan. He killed 12 soldiers, including one who was pregnant and one civilian and wounded more than 30 others during the 2009 Fort Hood shooting. So this dude just went on some uh, crazy uh, rampage, crazy shit. Good God, that's crazy. I would have never expected soldiers to like do crazy shit like this because you got to do a lot of stuff to become a soldier in the first place. So you mean to tell me you did all that just to fuck it all off? Get the lighters. We smoking his ass. The big Nidal has some pack. Ronald Gray. He's a serial killer who murdered four women and raped eight others while stationed at Fort Bragg in 1986. He's been on death row since the year I was born, 1988. And they're going to keep his ass there until he is dead, dead. Overkill. Six feet below. With no flowers or grass on top, just dirt. Nah, we ain't gonna give him now. We gonna give his ass. We gonna put him in a bunch of rocks. Next up, Timothy Hennis. 
He's convicted in 2010 of the murders of three civilians while stationed at Fort Bragg in 1985, but was previously tried and convicted in 1986 before being acquitted in 1989. After DNA evidence linked uh, him, Timothy Hennis, to the murders, he was court-martialed by the U.S. Army under the dual sovereignty doctrine of the United States Con Constitution. Yeah, his ass is on death row, too, getting smoked and all that. Clown. Next up. Here's some inmates that aren't on death row, but uh yeah, these they 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 did some shit, but we're going to get into it. Dwight J. Lovin. He robbed and murdered two cab drivers in 88 while stationed at Fort Hood, originally sentenced to death. Lovin's death sentence was commuted to life in prison without parole by by Barack Obama and on January 17th, 2017. Yeah, he got lucky. That boy got lucky, boy. He got lucky. Got real, real lucky. But his last name ain't lucky. Next up, we have Robert Bales. Robert Bales killed 16 Afghan civilians, including nine children. Let me just say Robert Bales is an extremely scummy-ass person and wounded six others in Afghanistan during the Kandahar massacre in 2012. Bells agreed to a plea deal during his court martial in order to avoid a death sentence and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. I don't think someone who kills innocent children should have a choice, you know? I think they should have just tricked his ass. Yeah, admit to it. We'll, we'll let you out. Okay, well, I did it. Okay, now we're going to put your ass in this fucking uh, underneath these, these needles. Dude is hella scummy. Hella scummy. Oh my goodness, man! I you know I kind of see why I've never heard of none of these people because this shit's crazy. Like I never knew that. Oh man, this is these this is interesting. Shout out to my baby mama for helping me get my notes ready. Next up, we have James, Paul, and Jesse. They participated. I ain't gonna say their last names or nothing. They don't deserve that. That's all y'all get. James, Paul, and Jesse. Spielman, Cortez, and Baker. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, participated in the Ma, Ma Madea rape and killings in 06, serving sentences ranging from 90 to 110 years with with the possibility with wait, 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 with the possibility of parole. So they serve 110 years, they'll have a chance of getting out. Well, hell, good chance these motherfuckers ain't gonna make it past 77. The, the, their fellow soldier accomplice and the ringleader, Stephen Dale Green, was tried in civilian court after being discharged from the military due to having antisocial personality disorder. Yeah, dude was batshit crazy, loopy, like crazy man crazy. Green was sentenced to life in prison without parole and committed suicide in 2014. You old coward. Oh, my goodness. You weak as hell. Man, he's a coward. Major, major coward. Y'all going take innocent people's lives and you want to make it easy on yourself and just kill yourself you fucking you pussy next up john russell killed five fellow soldiers at camp liberty in 2010 john russell is a very scummy person he pleaded guilty to avoid a possible death sentence and was sentenced to life in prison without parole y'all get y'all's lighters ready yeah, them dudes is getting smoked. <sighs> Next up, William Kreutzer Jr. He killed an officer and wounded 18 fellow soldiers at Fort Bragg when he opened fire on them in a cow in a in a in the field during a physical training formation. He was initially sentenced to death, but his death sentence was reduced to life in prison with the possi with the possibility of parole on appeal. Yeah, see what I'm saying? It's Next up, we got Michael Benihana. Actually, Michael Behina, not Benihana. He's convicted of killing an Iraqi prisoner, Ali Mansur Muhammad, while deployed to Iraq in 08. He was sentenced to 15 years of confinement and was granted parole on uh, March 14, 2014, after serving five years of his sentence. President Donald Trump granted him a full pardon on May 6, 2019. Now, 
you know, so this case right here, it's kind of a, I can't really, you know, I'm kind of like in a, on, on a fence on this one in particular, because dude was a prisoner, an American, he's a, he was under American supervision, and you know, we're not a country that really is out there and open, like publicly, for like, you know, harming and killing inmates and stuff, but I don't know. I guess that's just the positive side of me trying to speak. The other side of me is like, well, hell. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, I have no no opinion on that one. Next, John A. Bennett. Executed in 1961 for, for raping and attempting to kill an 11-year-old Austrian girl. He is currently the last person to be executed by the U.S. military. Get y'all sliders ready. Yep, we smoking on that John A. Bennett pack today, baby. Yes, sir. Next up, William Cowie. He was convicted for his part in the Miley, Miley Massacre, originally given a life sentence, but Nixon ordered the Army to transfer him to Fort Leavenworth to, to house arrest in Fort Benning one day after he was sentenced. Yeah, Richard Nixon. That was a real dick move, dick. Why would you give him house arrest? I don't understand that. Like, oh man. I'm glad he ain't my president. Next up, Charles Grainer. He's convicted of prisoner abuse in the connection with the 03 to 04 Abu Ghraib torture and prisoner abuse scandal. Griner was sentenced to 10 years of confinement and was released on parole after serving six and a half year sentence. Damn. Well, he got out. That's crazy. Next up, we have Justin Fisher and Calvin Glover. They were convicted of their roles in a fellow soldier, Barry Winchell's murder. Fisher was released from prison in August 2006, and Glover was released on parole August 27, 2020. So he just got out. Next up, we have Terry M. Helvey. He pled guilty to murdering fellow sailor Alan Schneidler and has since been transferred to FCI Greenville. I think we're going to have to take a trip to FCI Greenville next, people, and see what they got going over there. Next up, we have um, Clint. We have Clint Lawrence. Clint Lawrence, while he was commanding a combat patrol during a 2012 deployment in Afghanistan, the, he was the first lieutenant ordered one of his soldiers to shoot three Afghan men who had, who had approached at a high speed on a motorcycle. Two of the men died and one escaped. He was also convicted of threatening local Afghans and obstruction of justice. Lawrence was sentenced to 20 years of confinement. President Donald Trump granted him clemency on, on 15th of November 2019, and he was released from confinement the same day. Now, I got to tell you now, I'm just saying, if if I was in Afghanistan and I'm and I know about their methods and their tactics of uh you know harming U.S. soldiers, there's a good. I'm not saying I would have did that, but damn it, I would I I wouldn't have thought they was coming over to say hello and offer me a cup of tea and some ice cream. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of crazy. I'm I'm just saying. So, yeah, I, I there and then again, that's another one I don't really have a full opinion on because you know it could be it could go both ways. Maybe they was coming up because they wanted to get some cold water from them. Maybe not. I don't know. I just know me personally, I wouldn't have stood around and found out like I probably would have drove off or I don't know but that's a very that's a tricky one real 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 tricky real real tricky situation but anyways he's free next up Chelsea Manning she unlawfully uploaded and dis uh, dismented to the website WikiLeaks hundreds of thousands of classified diplomatic cables and military files and a video of an Apache helicopter killing 12 civilians in Baghdad in 07. She was sentenced to 35 years, people, and, and announced that she is a transgender woman after her sentencing. Obama commuted Manning's sentence to seven, sentence on January 17, 2017 resulting in her being released from the facility May 17th, 2017. Now, let's talk about this one, people. I got to have a drink for this. So basically, she was a team player that she didn't hold water. You know what I mean? Was she in the right 
for exposing our secrets or was she in the wrong for telling on us? You know, some people might say, well, yeah, this is a good thing she did that. But others will say she shouldn't have did that. Now, I know that I got some homies that, you know, we have history of things that we might have done in the past. And I would be very, very upset if they just came out and just put the business out there. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. But I do know that Obama let her ass out. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you this. They ain't going to trust their ass with no more motherfucking secrets. <laughs> they won't tell her shit. If a motherfucker steal a cookie off of a damn, out of a subway, they ain't going to let her ass know shit. You know what I'm saying? If you, you know when you're at the gas pump sometimes, or you've ever been at the gas pump and you get more gas than you're supposed to? She's the type of person that would go in there and tell the clerk, like, yeah, he pumped an extra $7 in gas. Yeah, I don't know about Chelsea Manning, but hey, whatever. I'm just reading my notes, people. Next up, we have, what's his name? Federico Daniel Mira, Marita. He pled guilty to uh, unpremeditated murder of killing Fala Zagum, a 17-year-old Iraqi National Guard private, sentenced to 25 years in prison, later transferred to a civilian prison, and he was paroled in 2019. Moral of the story, he killed someone that was under 18. In my book, that's a child that's fucked up. And next... Uh, Derek Miller. He was convicted of the premeditated murder of an Afghan civilian during a battlefield interrogation. Originally given a life sentence, he received support from the um, U.S. Representative Louis Gomert, which resulted in an army clemency and parole board reviewing. His sentence, sentence and reducing it to 20 years, making him eligible for parole. This guy was released May 20th, 2019, after serving eight years of his reduced sentence. I've kind of realized, if, like, you're in the army and you, like, like, kind of, like, kill someone or accidentally, say, accidentally kill someone, maybe, it seems like they don't give you, like, as much time as they would give people on the streets if they, like, shot each other or something. I don't know, because it seems like a lot of these sentences, like, these dudes are getting off kind of easy or something. I mean, I don't know. My dad did 28 years, and he didn't kill a motherfucking person, so it's kind of like, uh, I think it's kind of weird. You know, whatever. Next up. Uh, Abraham Thomas. He got a name of like a president or something. <laughs> he was executed in 1958 for murdering, murdering two fellow soldiers and their girlfriends in West Germany. Oh, I can tell you exactly what it was. His ass was just mad that no, no, none of them females wanted to give him no, uh, no, uh, no, 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 none of that. Mm -mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? He couldn't get none of that. So he was feeling some type of way that his other two dudes had their little pieces with him and. Yeah, he sounds like one of them salty-ass dudes that just don't get no play from no females, no nothing. So he's going to take it out on a whole bunch of other people because he's miserable. And his fucking, he's, he has zero game. Like, dude can't even play Mario on Super Nintendo. That's how much game he don't got. And he got executed in 1958. So you know what we doing right now? We smoking that Abraham Thomas pack, people. Yes, sir. Last but not least, we have Jonathan Wells. He's an author who wrote Icons of Evolution, previously drafted into the Army for two years during the Vietnam War. He publicly refused to report for reserve duty while attending college at, uni at the University of California, Berkeley. He got 18 months for that. He got 18 months because he didn't want to go fight someone that he didn't have business fighting. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of, I guess, well, I guess that was it was a different time in America. But let me tell you, I, I could I, listen. This is proof right here, people. This is proof. If I ever got drafted or they tried to draft my ass, you know what the fuck I would do? <laughs> Y'all know what I would do? This is what this is exactly what I would do. I would do this. I would do this right here. 